Hey folks, doing something a little bit different this time. Instead of attempting to capitalize on something and just hoping someone will be interested in a 15 minute video about a character in D&D, I've decided to pair this video with a video essay I've been wanting to talk about. In the card I did up in the corner and at the end of the video, there will be a link to another video I did on Mulan. Please check it out and tell me what you think. Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to the part of the channel where we take a look at characters from pop culture and determine what alignment they are. Today we'll be looking at Mulan from the animated Disney movies and I do mean the Disney movies, as in both of them. Can I get an F in chat, please? Like most other Disney movies, the story of Mulan is based on a pre-existing folklore called the Ballad of Mulan, written around 386 to 536 AD. While some believe she was a real person, it's more likely that she's always been a fictional character that was meant to be a good representation of gender equality. The old legend is pretty basic, and here's a brief summary. Mulan is weaving at a loom, completely dissatisfied with her life. The Emperor, or Khan, is calling for a draft, and just like in the movie, each family is meant to present one male to the army. It's not actually clear whether or not she replaces her father because he's too old, but she does end up buying equipment in a market from each of the cardinal directions and then heads up the Yellow River the next day. Ten years later, Mulan is declared a war hero, and, and when asked about what she wanted as a reward, she just said she wants a horse to go back home. After that, she gets back home, she returns to her life as a lady, and when she is visited, visited by her comrade at arms, they are all shocked to see her. The poem ends with a four-line stanza that reads, The buck bounds here and there, while the doe has narrow eyes. But when the two rabbits run side by side, how can you tell the female from the male? As many of you probably have guessed, this stanza is supposed to show that while men and women are different in individual ways, from a distance there's no notable difference. The animated Disney movie reflects this message as well, however the film does take its own liberties while still honoring the old poem. Fa Mulan is an average girl living in Imperial China. It is assumed that she is living around the same era as the poem, though I cannot independently verify this. Mulan lives in a seemingly wealthy home and is in training to become a bride and meeting with a matchmaker to be set up for an arranged marriage to be married off to another aristocrat. But Chang, an arranged marriage? Believe me, we'll get to that later. Just like in the poem, she does not seem to be a good fit for this feminine role. China is attacked by a foreign military and rather than letting her father go, Mulan steals her family equipment and rides off to war. Based on the behavior and actions around the beginning of the movie, I deduce that Mulan's starting alignment must be lawful good which is an interesting series first for us. At the beginning of the movie, Mulan does her best to uphold her family traditions and honor. She is also seen to be very kind, sweet, and genuinely a good and helpful person. I will skew it to be more on the neutral side of things though because she is a bit of a wild card in her family. But let's address the elephant in the room. I will be looking at the Mulan in both Disney movies, both Mulan 1 and Mulan 2. Now I'm quickly going to explain the plot to Mulan 2 because it's just now occurring to me that most of you may not have seen it. And believe me, you ain't missing much. Basically, Mulan 2 takes place one month after Mulan 1. Mulan and Shang must assemble a team, they pick the three boys from the last movie, to escort three princesses to a neighboring kingdom for an arranged marriage. This must be done because China is under attack yet again, and this marriage will lead to military aid that China desperately needs because the Imperial Army was entirely wasted by the Huns in the last movie. Remember, if this marriage doesn't happen, China is doomed. So, we got three princesses in an arranged marriage, and we got three single boys in a straight-to-VHS Disney sequel. What do you think is going to happen? I know Mulan 2 is absolute hun sweat, and I should ignore it, but this series has always been about looking at characters throughout their whole lives. And in my post-analysis, I will definitely be addressing this and looking at the changes that were made thoroughly there. And with that, let's go. Let's get down to business, to the freight, the haunts. Mulan begins her movie with cheating. Definitely chaotic neutral. Can you help me with my chores today? <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Chaotic neutral. Father, I brought you Reminding her father to stick to the doctor's orders in order to maintain his health? Lawful good. I'm not even going to pretend for a second to know the historical accuracy of this, so I'm just going to rely on the movie telling me that becoming a bride to bring your family honor is lawful neutral. Present. Speaking without permission. Chaotic neutral. Based on what we've seen in this movie, Mulan not only publicly interrupts the process, but tries to get her family out of serving in the military in order to protect her aging father. Chaotic good. 
I know people complain about this sequence, mostly because of the music, but I find it badass and awesome. Self-sacrifice to save her father despite going against tradition. Chaotic good. Hey. Chest high, feet apart, head up, and strut! I mean, are you not going to follow the advice of a literal spirit dragon? Lawful neutral. Let's get down to business. Do Natural 20 song, you're not allowed to argue with me on this. Also, throughout the sequence, Mulan had the opportunity to leave, literally saving her life and her father's, but chose to stick around to bring her family honor and serve her country. Lawful good. Smith. The fact that it's implied that this is Mulan's first bath after weeks of training amazes me more than anything else. Neutral. Hey. I'll hold him, and you punch. Encouraging your disgrace, Captain. Neutral good. Uh, how about a Mulan has no interest in talking about girls, but she plays along to be part of the group. Neutral good. Paying respects to the dead. Lawful good. Mulan takes the last cannon and breaks rank to do this crazy Hail Mary of a plan, causing an avalanche. One that would kill a lot of Huns, but then likely kill herself and her allies. Chaotic good. Shang! Mulan spent valuable seconds helping Shang rather than saving herself. Awful good. Mulan is ready to accept death from an unjust system. Lawful neutral. Mulan is done, and reasonably speaking, a small handful of Huns really shouldn't be able to affect the Forbidden City. But she goes down there to warn them anyway. Lawful good. Shang has an idea, but Mulan takes some of his soldiers and tries something different. Chaotic good. Mulan cuts the rope separating Shan Yu from the Emperor. She then saves Shang by aggroing him. Lawful good. Well, you can have his job. Mulan rejects the offer to work for the Emperor and then goes home, but not before hugging the Emperor. They joke about it, but even I knew as a kid that this was a huge no-no. Chaotic good. Mulan brings home trinkets and gifts, presenting them to her father to show that she brought honor to the family. Great stuff. Awful good. Mulan is supposed to be doing her chores. Instead, she is singing to kids. Neutral, I guess. Mulan agreeing to marry Shang is lawful neutral. General Shang, Bob Mulan, orders from His Majesty the Emperor. They then put their wedding on hold to serve the Emperor again, after only just a month from coming back from the last war. Dang, lawful good. Your Majesty, an arranged marriage? They agree to do a stealth mission to escort three princesses to another kingdom as a political alliance. Mulan protests this but sees the value in serving her country. Lawful good. So... You're getting married. Oh. Mulan spends time getting to know these princesses before escorting them. Neutral. But Shang, an arranged marriage? She continues to question their mission along the way. Chaotic neutral. Well... Mulan talks to this princess, whose name I never bothered to learn, and gives her honest opinion with no context. If Mulan knew that she was trying to fish for love advice, the alignment of this action would change, but for now, it's neutral. Thing over here! Saving the princesses is neutral good. Mulan? During this fight, Shang is being a real ass. Mulan reacts about as understandably as she can. Neutral good. Hey, what about old Shanghai? She then decides to leave Shang behind so that he can sleep to go get the princesses. Chaotic good. Mulan, it's love. Ah! Holy shit, I hate this. This reaction is totally against her character. Nat 1 and chaotic neutral. Wait a second. Mulan abandons her post to tell her ex she loves him. Okay. Chaotic neutral. Dismissing Mushu is neutral because she realizes he can't help anyone anymore. Neutral. Shang, I've got your back. Fighting alongside your ex to save the princesses. Neutral good, I guess. It won't hold us both. Mulan refuses to let Shang go. Lawful good. No. Your orders are to take care of each other. Mulan then tells the princesses to go with the boys and she will complete the mission without them. Completely dooming the country, but hey, they get to have the boyfriends they want. Chaotic good. A marriage was promised! And a marriage there will be. Genuinely decent twist. Mulan, being the hero of China, is a pretty good exchange and a noble sacrifice. 
But she did lie to them, and this is a crazy risky gamble that they're even interested. This is not how arranged marriages work. Chaotic good. Mushu? Mulan realizes that Mushu completely hijacked the wedding and just lets it play out. Chaotic neutral. So this is the famous Mushu. Mulan tells Shang about Mushu. Somehow Lawful I neutral. What does combining our temples do? This sounds like bullshit, but whatever. Chaotic good. Can you do this? Aren't there rules? Of course. Right next to the rules about dressing up like a man and joining the army. God damn, I hate Mulan too. It was one of those movies where it was a total cash grab. They completely obliterated Mulan's character in that, and they have her do several huge out of character moments that really butcher her. Now, does that completely ruin the first movie? No, I don't think so. Ask anyone and they'll pretty much all agree that Mulan 2 only exists in this awful alternate universe where they all turn into these selfish nitwits. However, in both movies, it's hard to deny that Mulan goes through an arc. In the first film, Mulan goes from this lawful good character to becoming a confident and relaxed war hero, while in the second movie, she continues even further concerned more for individual people rather than family honor or anything like that. Now, I don't agree with that analysis or transformation of her character, since the first movie, we don't see any sign of her indicating any real chaotic tendencies other than a few personality quirks. Some of you in the comments may be arguing, but Mulan is going against family tradition and honor. There's no way that she isn't chaotic good. And I would argue, no, she really doesn't. Yes, she does break tradition and rebels by joining the military, but that isn't enough to change everything else about her. In the first movie, Mulan performed six lawful good and three lawful neutral actions with only three good and neutral acts combined. Meanwhile, she has performed five chaotic good and three chaotic neutral acts, and those acts were more to do with her outgoing personality rather than any direct act against tradition. All of her actions were meant to save her father and bring honor to her family. Also, the chaotic acts she did were only meant to serve those two goals. Now, some of you might be thinking, what about this scene? Maybe I didn't go for my father. Maybe what I really wanted was to prove I could do things right. So when I looked in the mirror, I'd see someone worthwhile. Even if we started her at Chaotic Good, all of her actions would bring her towards Neutral Good anyway. Which is why Mulan 2 is so awful and everything seems so wrong when you watch it. Throughout the entire movie, Mulan just gives the middle finger to tradition and the well-being of others for some romance. Now, even though she had a crush on Shang in the first movie, neither of them actually on their impulses until after the war was over and they could explore those feelings. Hell, the bastardization of Shang's character should make you even angrier. Dude's a total professional in the first movie and is reduced to this mess in the second. What the hell happened? Mulan 2 is just trash, not even fit to give a child because the moral of the movie just kind of comes down to screw your country and your duties, break your promises as needed to your own personal happiness, and damn the consequences, even if they lead to death and destruction. China is doomed in this universe. If you like this video, be sure to check out my video essay on Mulan remake and how I think it might actually be good. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.